Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj. Please thank you very much for joining us, Guru Maharaj. And please, Sarvabhat uh, Pranam, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Thank you very much for joining the call from Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tanavat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Today, thank you very much, Maharaj, Tanavat Pranam. Today, we are fortunate to have you, Maharaj. To enlighten us in the topic of Srimad Bhagavatam, 5th Canto, 19th chapter, and 28th verse, Maharaj. I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5. Chapter 19, verse number 28. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Yadatrana Swagasukhava Vesitam. Shivasya Sukasya Kritasya Sovanam Tena Jana Be Smrita Mad Janman Nasyad Varse Hari Yam Bajatam Samtan Lotin We are now living in the heavenly planets. Undoubtedly, as a result of having performed ritualistic ceremonies, pious activities, and yagyas, and having studied the Vedas. However, our lives here will one day be finished. We pray that, that, that at that time, if any merit remains from our pious activities, we may again take birth in Bhart Varsha as human beings able to remember the lotus feet of the Lord. The Lord is so kind that he personally comes to the land of Bhart Varsha and expands the good fortune of its people. Srila Prabhupada's purport. It is certainly as a result of pious activities that one takes birth in heavenly planets those plants must nevertheless come down again to earth as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Shinye punya marta loke vishanti. Even the demigods must return to earth to work like ordinary men when the results of their pious activities expire. Nevertheless, the demigods desire to come to the land of Bhagavarsha. If even a small portion of the merits <coughs> and their pious activities remain. In other words, to take birth in Bhart Varsha, one must perform more pious activities than the demigods. In Bhart Varsha, one is naturally Krishna conscious. And if one further cultivates his Krishna consciousness, by the grace of Krishna, he can certainly expand his good fortune, become perfect in Krishna consciousness, very easily go going back home back to Godhead. In other places in the Vedic literature, it is found that even the demigods want to come to this land of Bhart Varsha. A foolish person may desire to be promoted to the heavenly planets as a result of his pious activities, but even the demigods from the heavenly planets want to come to Bhart Varsha and achieve bodies that may be very easily used to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu repeatedly says, Bharate Bhumite Huila Manusa Janmayar, 
Janma sartaka kari kara upara upar kara. A human being born in the land of Bhargyarsha has the special prerogative to develop Krishna consciousness. Those, therefore, those already born in Bhargyarsha should take lessons from the Shastras and Guru and should fully take advantage of the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in order to be fully equipped in Krishna consciousness. By taking full advantage of Krishna consciousness, one goes back home, back to Godhead. Yanti Mavya Jino Pimam. The Krishna consciousness movement is therefore spreading this facility to human society by opening many centers all over the world so that people may associate with the pure devotees of the Krishna consciousness movement, understand the science of Krishna consciousness, and ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari, Pasyatya De Sitarine. Panchakalpa Taru Bistya, Kuripa Sindupe Bata Patitanam Pavane Vyo, Vaishnave Vyo, Namaho Namaha. Jaisi Krishna. Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadara, Sivasari, Gaur, Mahdavindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Now in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Purna Vritta Arjuna, that from the highest planet in the material world, Brahma Loka, down to the lowest, Patala Loka, there is repeated birth and death. <laughs> no matter wherever you go in the material existence. And there are three realms. There are the higher planets, Swarga Loka. Then there's the middle planets. Uh, Borloka, Abuba, Borloka, yeah, and then uh, the lower planets, Bubaloka, Bor, Buba. So uh, these three realms of existence make up 14 planetary systems and many millions and millions of universes. So according to one's activities which are based on one's desires combine the act the desires which express themselves in the form of activities one develops a certain consciousness and by that consciousness one is propelled in the direction of that consciousness according to the eight million four hundred thousand species of life so outside of these 8,400,000 species of life, there are the spiritual existence. But the realm of material existence consists of three realms of existence, higher, middle, and lower. So from the point of view of material understanding, the higher planets are the most desirable. Why? Because um, life is very long there. Just like it says, one day of the demigods equals six months on the earthly realm. Um, there are great amounts of facilities to enjoy sense gratification. People are generally free from all the material miseries that are there in the middle and especially the lower planets. And uh, um, there are many other benefits. Mm -hmm. People are more beautiful there. People are more intelligent there. 
materially we're speaking, of course. And there's so many other benefits. Even the Srimad Bhagavatam describes in the uh, third canto a little bit about the realms of material existence in the 15th chapter of the third canto. But here we see that those who have attained that realm, or those who are even born in that realm, um, there's a uh, desire that, because as we mentioned, no place in the material world is permanent. Um, everything is temporary in the material world. Some are more temporary, but some are less temporary, but they're all temporary. And they're also, as Krishna says, Dukalayama Sasratam, that they are both temporary and miserable. Uh, both of these characteristics make up the material world. It's full of suffering, and at the same time, it is temporary. And so here it is a prayer by those who have reached the heavenly planets that then, as it says here, Shine Punya Marta Loka Vishanti. Um, Prabhupada speaks this verse, which is also part of the Bhagavad Gita, that um, if you're driving in your car, um, you uh, can run out of gas at a certain time if you don't refill your tank. <laughs> so using that analogy, that it's at one point, even though one has achieved such lofty existence in the material realm, it ends. It ends. As Krishna says, birth, disease, old age, and death are there everywhere throughout the three, the 14 planetary systems, the three realms of existence. So, but we are, we are eternal. That's the, that's the, uh, we say dichotomy. So we, we live in a world of temporarily, temporal, that's which is temporary, we are eternal. And so we can never be fully satisfied in any place in the material world because it's contrary to our existence, contrary to our nature. Therefore, we must enter into the realm where eternality is there, but in the material world, there isn't any. Now here, what is nice and nice is mentioned is that even those who are on the heavenly planets, and you'll see there are many, and I use the word with emphasis, many people who practice pious activities, or even religious activities, and which are pious activities, and um, even devotional service, sometimes they aspire for higher realms of material happiness. But here it says that those who attain it, they know that at one time it's going to end. And so therefore they're thinking, let me come down to the middle planetary systems, the earth planetary systems. Why? Because on the earth or the middle planetary systems, there is a greater chance that one can perfect the goal of life. Why isn't it there in the higher planetary systems? Well, you'll see, and it can be understood in terms of pious and impious, that the greater, the greater facility for material happiness, the greater the illusion that comes by way of that facility. Those who are in the lower levels who are suffering, and their suffering is evident, they know that this realm that they live in is what it is, it's suffering. And therefore, they want a better material position to get out of that. But those who have attained the perfection of material position understand that in order to further my success, I must go back 
to the realm, the lower realms, the middle realm, not the lowest realm, the middle realm, the earth realm, and perform devotional service. Because on the middle realm, there is more of a balance. And of course, that balance is being changed right now. We're seeing that suffering is out many years ago. In others, on this earth planet, there was a, be a better balance of happiness and distress. But now people have become more and more sinful on the earthly realm. So that means that shifts the balance a little bit towards the emphasis on distress. But here, when Prabhupada is explaining that come back and take birth in Bardvarsha, and on the middle planetary systems, and particularly in the land of India, as we see from the discussion in previous verses, and maybe up the upcoming verses, that one has a very good chance to be born in a family of pious religious persons, and therefore they can get a good start in executing the ultimate goal of life, uh, which is to go back home, back to Godhead. The goal of life is self-realization. Atato, Brahma, Jigyasa. Now in this human form of life, understand who you are and what is your actual best interest. And that is to perform devotional service. Because devotional service, as it says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sabuka Bunoi Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi that in the, the, the devotional service uh, is the constitutional nature and the ultimate treasure of the living entity's existence. And therefore, it becomes the only goal of life. So Prabhupada, I think, I think we, did we, uh, did we complete the uh, purport? I uh, go down to the very end of the purport. I think Prabhupada, uh, uh, go down the page and let's see towards the end of the purport. Hare Krishna. Whoever is the host, can you please go down to the end of the purport? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Prabhupada says, yeah, the Krishna conscious movement is therefore spreading this facility in humans is by opening many centers all over the world. People may associate with pure devotees of the Krishna conscious movement, understand the science of Krishna consciousness, and ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. So here's the advantage. And it's a big, it's a great advantage, because in the higher realms, because there is too much material enjoyment, people get illusioned by that. And because of that, they... Uh, somehow miss the opportunity or do not take the opportunity to go back home, back to Godhead. And this is the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he's appeared on this earth planet in order to give um, what we say, the goal of life of uh, self-realization in the form of uh, pure Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada speaks in other places in his lectures that those on the higher planets, they actually pray to take birth in this middle planetary system in the home of devotees so they can have an easy chance to go back home, back to Godhead. And this is a fact, and you'll see. Those of you who are, have regular association with the devotees in Krishna consciousness can see that the children that are born to devotees in our movement are very, very advanced already. Um, they are more intelligent and they have an a, a tendency for spiritual life from the very beginning of their existence. I was just... Uh, with one little girl. She was two years old. She was born on Lord Nityananda's appearance day in the year 2020. She's um, two. 
And her parents are both initiated and very serious devotees practicing Krishna consciousness. And um, they, were to, uh, they would tell her, speak about Prahlad Maharaj. And she would, she's two now. And, and it's her English or her ability to speak is not so clear, but she's not only speaking about Prahlad Maharaj, she's imitating the pastime where Rani Kashipu is, is um, being killed by Lord Nishringadev. She's smiling. She speaks about it. Um, and uh, she gets everyone attracted to her because they say when a little child speaks philosophy, everybody listens. <laughs> and she's also indicating the pastime. And this is just one of the many pastimes that she can speak about. It's not that she's just limited. And uh, she does it so naturally. She dances. And um, she also tries to chant Hare Krishna. And she does. She doesn't say the whole mantra always clearly. She does. But you know, sometimes it's in her own way. So it's interesting. She's only two. Um, and so we understood that this soul, who now has a little girl's birth in this realm of existence in the family of the, obviously she was a devotee in her last life. Or sometimes we actually say that, and this is, they're either devotees in their last life and come again in this life, or have come from the higher realms into these, this realm, in order to uh, perfect their life, as this verse says here. We're seeing it all the time, not, not some, but many of our children, all practically all of the children born in this movement are actually great souls who have either had Krishna consciousness in their last life or have come from the, uh, the higher realms of material existence and now have take birth. And as this verse says, Prabhupada says, there's a class of of living entities in the higher planets who pray that if I have to be born again, let me be born in the family of devotees in Lord Chaitanya's movement. They are aware of Lord Chaitanya's movement. What the facility or the advantage of performing Lord Chaitanya's movement is very strong in the area of Bhart Varsha. This Mahaprabhu appeared in this planet in order to spread Krishna consciousness. And uh, therefore, in the higher planetary systems, um, it, it's very bewildering to live in that realm because too much material enjoyment. Um, they say there's two disqualifications or apparent disqualifications for uh, performing devotional service. One is too much material enjoyment, and the other one is too much material suffering. The too much material suffering is that people are more absorbed in uh, overcoming their material suffering than performing devotional service. If they don't have a place to live, if they're hungry, they don't have proper food, if they're suffering from so many diseases, um, they're more focused on somehow making a solution to that and not so much inclined to spiritual life. And in the higher realms, because of the ultimate too much happiness, now the realms of the material existence in the higher realms, uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati gives a beautiful um, statement. Um, in, in glorifying Lord Chaitanya's movement, he says, Kaivalya Narakarakasyedam. Kaivalya Narakarakasyedam. Akash Pushpayate. Akash Pushpayate is an interesting statement. Akash means sky. And Pushpa means, means flowers those flowers that grow in the sky. Or another 
analogy to that same example is the uh, the eggs of a horse. Now, do eggs do horses have eggs? Do flowers grow in the sky? This is simply imaginations. These things are not true at all. So, what is he saying? He says that the happiness in material and material higher planets is like flowers growing in the sky and the happiness of kaivalya kaivalya means to become one and again achieve liberation in the oneness both of these he calls uh, kaivalya narakashya dam that means it's hell he calls it hell and he calls the uh, the uh, ability or the facility that is described in various scriptures to be like flowers in the sky, to have that realm of material existence. So what is he saying? He's saying, don't try for any of these. <laughs> They're just delusions. The real happiness, or the real goal of life is to engage in devotional service under the under the care of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. So this Sankirtan movement is coming from the spiritual world, brought to the material world by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna speaks to his internal concert, Srimati Radharani, prior to his descent into this material world as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, describing his upcoming uh, uh, incarnation to, to, to spread the Krishna consciousness movement or spread the glories of the worship of Lord Krishna throughout the, the universes. And so this, uh, this uh, movement by Sri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which we call the ISKCON movement, as is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, is a branch of, of Lord Chaitanya's movement. We are directly connected to Lord Chaitanya through the process of Krishna consciousness. And Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Unahyanya. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself in the role of his own devotee teaching from the position of a devotee how to worship the Lord in pure devotional service through the execution of the Sankirtan movement. Yagyai Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi Sumedusaham Krishna Varnam Tusa Krishna Sangopanga Saparishadam Yagyai Sankirtanai Prayai Yajanti Hi Sumedusaha. Sumedusa Su means great and Medusa means intelligence. Those who are endowed with good intelligence will understand and accept the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as their goal of life in the form of this Harinam Sankirtan movement, which can elevate one to go back home, back to God, and achieve the ultimate goal of life. The ultimate goal of life is to awaken the loving relationship that the soul has for the Supreme Soul, Krishna, in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And there is no more merciful manifestation of Krishna other than Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to teach that through this Sankirtan movement. So the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, the reading and studying of Srimad Bhagavatam, the association of the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the worship of the Lord in his archivigraha form and visiting of the holy places comprises the essence of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement. But the pinnacle and the ultimate principle is to chant Hare Krishna both in Kirtan and in Japa. Not just Kirtan, not just Japa, but both. One should perform Kirtan regularly, one should. Uh, 
accept the shelter of the Krishna's representative, the bona fide spiritual master, learn the science of execution Krishna consciousness that centers around chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, focus on developing this in relationship to others, and ultimately practice Krishna consciousness and achieve the goal of life. We can see that those who have achieved the higher planetary realms, they want to take birth on this level so they can go back home, back to Godhead. Material happiness cannot satisfy the living being. And material happiness, we actually say, is a misnomer. It's a misnomer because wherever you see material happiness, you also connect with material suffering. So those in the, in the higher realms, in Swargaloka, they know sooner or later it's going to end. And when it ends, it's going to be miserable. But they say, when it does end, let us come back to Earth, Bhardvarsha, and take up Lord Chaitanya's movement. So they pray to take birth in the family of devotees. And this is mentioned in this area of the of Srimad Bhagavatam. So we can, we can see why, what is the futility that we have here by wasting time trying to improve one's material arrangements, um, becoming more wealthy, trying to, pos trying to po position oneself in, in society in such a way that one can somehow or other facilitate all of the happiness that is so-called given by material existence, such as fame, beauty, wealth, knowledge, so many things, strength. All of these things that are ephemeral, they all have to do with the material body. They cannot satisfy the soul because they are external. The soul is by nature part of Krishna. The soul is by nature eternal. These things are temporary and they're subject to bring about material suffering along with it. So we, we, we say, why waste time trying to improve your material situation when you can't really improve it? Even if you get some improvement, it's lost in due course of time. And even if you do get some material improvement, will it bring you happiness that is not guaranteed? We see that even within the realm of people who have achieved great amounts of material success, the suffering level is even higher. And this is actually a statistics. Those who are wealthy and famous have more material problems than others. Why? Because they so-called have understood achieved their goal, but at the same time, they haven't achieved the result, the happiness that they're looking for. Why? Because these things don't bring happiness. They may stabilize a person's material situation for a small period of time, but we can use the example of the residents of the higher planets. They want to come back to the earth planet when their highest activities are finished. In other words, when their life is up on the higher planetary systems, they want to come back here. They don't want to be reborn in the higher planetary systems. They want to come back here and take part in Lord Chaitanya's movement because this is the actual benefit. So anyone who's in Lord Chaitanya's movement should understand how fortunate we are not to waste time trying to improve our material situations in the name of devotional service. Um, that is called karma mishra bhakti, and it doesn't satisfy the soul. It just diverts one's attention to the real goal of life. Just one, one should learn to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra more and more and more. Just recently, um, I just returned from India yesterday, uh, last night, and um, I was with one devotee in Mumbai, and he's... Um, he has a great amount of material success, but what does he do? He, um, 
He chants every day, 32 rounds a day. He, um, on, um, on Akadasis, they chant uh, 32 rounds on that day. They have a group of devotees. On, um, on near Jal Akadasi, which comes up in June every year, they do 128 rounds a day. And on the appearance day of Srila Haridas Dakor, they do 192 rounds. And I said, how is it possible? He said, yes, we start at 2 o'clock in the morning, and we end at 11 o'clock at night. We chant for 21 hours. We finish 192 rounds, and there's a significant group of devotees who do that. <laughs> so he, he, he has a nice family. Um, and he's materially situated, but he understands what is the real goal of life is to, is to actually engage in Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement and uh, devotional service to the Lord. So this is a feature of intelligence. Intelligence means to understand what is my best interest. If a person is, cl is claiming to be intelligent, but doesn't know their best interest, then you, we can say that is misdirected intelligence. That is called duskritina. Kritina means merit or intelligence. And dus means misunderstanding or wrong use of intelligence. The wrong use of intelligence is simply to apply it to the material life to, in order to facilitate greater and greater forms of material success. The good intelligence, Sumedha Saha, as it's mentioned in that verse, means to engage in Krishna consciousness. So those who have our material intelligence, they are, they are sometimes called Maya Aparita Gyan. Maya Aparita Gyan means that intelligence that's been stolen by the illusionary energy. Although they may be high, nicely placed within the material world, they are considered to be ignorant of the real goal of life and they waste their time simply in things that cannot give them happiness and they're always struggling to uh, increase the illusion of material existence <laughs> through material arrangement so what is the solution if you're a devotee in the krishna consciousness movement don't waste time trying to improve your material situation. There's no need to do that. Just engage in devotional service. If there's some improvement in the material situation, it will happen automatically by Krishna's arrangement. One doesn't have to work for that. And um, just engage in Krishna consciousness. And especially, chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is the happiness we're looking for, and it propels one in the direction of success in life. That is to come in contact with Krishna through the chanting of his holy name and engaging in his devotional service and awaken our eternal loving relationship with Krishna. So those on the higher planetary systems, they're intelligent. They know, wow, I have everything material and it's going to end soon. <laughs> and, uh, and of course, even in Prabhupada says, even in the higher planetary systems, there's problems. Just like it's mentioned that uh, the, the uh, spiritual master of the demigods, um, Brihaspati, he is a spiritual master of the demigods. And then there are many demigods, and there's one demigod called Chandra. So there's a story in the Bhagavatam where Chandra becomes interested and lusty after, Ch uh, after Brihaspati's wife and chases after Brihaspati's wife. So this, this, uh, this lusty desire is still there in the higher planetary systems, and there are so many problems also. Sometimes uh, they commit offenses in the higher planetary systems by engaging in these material activities and they're forced to fall from that realm and suffer because of that. 
So uh, wherever you go in the material world, it's the same thing. Janma mitu jana vani dukkha dosha udarshanam is birth, death, disease, and old age. Don't try for any of that. Don't try for any, try to waste time for material improvement because material improvement means just, uh, you know, um, better eating, better sleeping, better mating, and better defending. But Prabhupada says there is no question of better. There's an example where one, uh, one um, man, he uh, he actually is a, he he has a disease. He has I think he has uh, he has leprosy or something. I think I'm not sure of the particular disease, but he has a very qualified and beautiful wife, and she takes care of him very nicely. Um, but he's interested in this one prostitute, and this prostitute is a very high class prostitute. And she is quite expensive, but he becomes attracted to her. And uh, he wants to engage in activities with her. So his wife, she's very concerned that her husband becomes happy. So she goes to the prostitute and she starts serving the prostitute and explains that we don't have the money, but my husband wants to uh, use your service. So the prostitute's quite in intelligent and she's he's she's thinking why is this guy coming here he has a very qualified wife but that's what he wants and so the wife wants to facilitate that so she arranges and processes said send him here so um, he comes and so the first thing she does is she cooks the prostitute cooks a, a feast and she put she presents it to the man and she puts it in three different bowls. She puts it in, in a paper plate. She puts it in a silver bowl. And she puts it in the metal bowl. And then she puts it in a golden bowl. And she puts the same food in all three bowls. And she serves it to the, to the uh, man. So then he's looking. And he's thinking she's serving the same food in three different containers, what is this? So he's curious and he has to ask. So he asks, why are you serving the same food in three different containers? And she looks at him in a very stern way. And she says, why are you wasting time coming here? You have a very nice wife. It's all the same. <laughs> it's all the same. So go. <laughs> and he gets the message. Yeah, it's all the same. So whether you're enjoying in the higher planetary systems or you're trying to enjoy in the middle planetary systems or you're trying to somehow or other overcome your suffering in the middle to um, lower planetary systems and trying to enjoy there, material happiness is all the same. <laughs> the dog is doing it. Uh, the cockroaches are doing it. The human beings are thinking that they're in better position because they can do it in a nicer facility, but it's all the same. Material happiness is what it is. It's simply an illusion about what is what is actually the goal of life. The real goal of life is to awaken in our, the knowledge of Krishna and engage in devotion and service. That will propel one to the realm of eternal happiness which is life is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss. That happiness that is real, which does not end. Susukam kartam avyayam, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. The, this devotional service is su, sukam. Sukha means happiness. But what is that happiness? Su, sukam it is greatest, the greatest form of happiness. It is that happiness that doesn't end. And that happiness and that's not dependent on one's position or one's identity. And that is because each and every living being is a pure spirit soul. And they have that hidden treasure within their hearts. But unfortunately, they're chasing somewhere else for a treasure. Prabhupada tells the story of, uh, yeah, this knowledge, the king of and the most secret of all secrets, the purest. 
because it gives direct perception of the self by realization. It's the perfection of the, it is everlasting and joyfully performed. Susukum kartam avyayam, joyfully performed. Prabhupada well, tells the story of a man. <clears throat> He's born and throughout his life he hears that there's a great treasure somewhere. So he's very interested in finding that treasure. And so he makes that, finding that treasure the goal of life. So what does he do? He uh, wanders throughout the world looking for that treasure. He's getting maps, he's getting advice, he's getting, he's doing so many things trying to find that treasure. His whole life he spends trying to find that treasure. At one point he dies without achieving it. Then what happens, his relatives come forth. They take, they have his body brought back to his home and they're digging a grave in the backyard of his home. And what happens when they dig a grave? They unearth the treasure, the treasures there in his own backyard. <laughs> so that is, that is the uh, understanding of life. We're looking for happiness outside, but it's there within your own heart. What is that? Krishna sits within the hearts of all living entities. He is Antaryama, and he's directing us to perform activities that are awaken the realization that Krishna is personally present in our life, within our heart, and fully manifested himself externally as Sri Krishna and Vrindavan in the form of devotional service. So there's no need to waste time trying to improve material life and because ultimately time is the most precious thing. We only have so much time and therefore and to use time in the proper way means to spend that time to awaken our loving relationship with Krishna through the process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for wonderful, wonderful, always nectarian class Maharaj. So many good points that um, we just chant Hare Krishna and also serve the devotees. Where the devotees and material things are there, but I think whatever we <laughs> that is not what is going to get us. But so the, we have a valuable life in the Parthakanda or, or uh, the human form of life. So we just need to make use of it and uh, by chanting Hare Krishna and taking the association of devotees. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So many, so many good points and pastimes. Um, Dear devotees, if you have any questions or relations, please go ahead. Um, either you can unmute yourself and ask the question or raise your hand. I can. Thank you. Hey, Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, I just wanted to thank you so very much for the beautiful class. And it was, um, I really appreciated you reminding us that we don't have to, you know, go out seeking material satisfaction and that if we just continue to try to surrender, surrender to Krishna, that he will provide everything that we need. We don't have to waste our time and energy because like you said, time is so precious and our material lives are so short that if we waste so much time chasing after all this material, all these material things, then we lose out on our opportunities to do devotional service. So yeah. thank you so much. I needed to hear that again. <laughs> thank you. They say time is precious. Money, you can, you can gain it and you can lose it and you can gain it again. The time goes in one direction. Yes. Whatever's whatever's gone can never be regained by even millions and millions of dollars. The time is very precious. So using time in the best possible way means to um, engage in that activity which will bring us beyond time 
into the realm of timelessness, into our eternal existence. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Parma Mataji is saying, Dhanavad uh, Pranam Maharaj, thank you so much for your wonderful association, Hare Krishna. And Kavita Mataji, Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please bless us, Mata, Maharaj. Uh, this is Kavita Sharma Mataji, Hare Krishna. Yeah, we ask the devotees, if they can, to turn on their cameras so we can have a live audience. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. <laughs> well, now I know who's there. <laughs> And it's nice because uh, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha. Okay, so any challenging questions? Or any questions? <laughs> uh -huh. I don't see any hands raised. Dear, dear devotees, if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, ask Maharaj. Hare Krishna. I don't see any questions in the chat box, Maharaj. And yeah, Sweet. I see Sweet. everyone raised hands. Sri Devi Devi Dasi. Mataji, please go ahead, Mataji. And then Vrindavan. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for this class reminding us of what a valuable birth it is to be born in the holy land of India. But I do have a question. If we just run after devotional service, who will take care of our families? Who will take care of our kids? Who will take care of our you know, bills and all the other things that go with living in this material world? Krishna Matta Krishna Pitta Krishna Dana Pran. And Krishna is the supreme controller. He's the supreme uh, um, power within ex existence. You think that if you engage in devotional service to the Lord, the Lord is going to neglect his devotee? And Krishna says, Koti Yepardijani Hina Main Bhakti Pranashiti. Whatever the devotee needs, even if the devotee is not qualified, Krishna helps. If Krishna provides everything. The story of, of uh, uh, what was it? Arju Arjuna, Arjuna, Arjuna Acharya is a very nice story from the, where this one very poor man, and um, he was a devotee of the Lord, and he would um, uh, um, go out every day and beg. And then come back, whatever he begged, he would give to his wife, and they would cook in the evening, and that's what they would eat. And during the day, he would read Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. So he's reading that verse um, from the Bhagavad Gita. Yoga Shema Vahami Aham. If you engage in my devotional service, I carry what you lack and preserve what you have. So he didn't like that statement that the Lord carries with him because he said well he's thinking i have to go out and beg every day so he took a pencil a red pen and he scratched that part of the verse out thinking that it's not correct <laughs> and so that day he went out begging while he was out two young beautiful boys came to the home of his wife and they knocked on the door. She opened the door and she said, oh, two beautiful boys. And they said, yes, Mataji, we have come. We are sent by your husband and he has given us all of these things for you. And here they are. So he, she gave, they gave her some grains, some rice, some otter, some milk products, vegetables, everything. He's thinking, wow, my husband begs so nicely and, and these boys are bringing it. And so she's all happy. But then the boy said, but you know, your husband, he, he, he took a, a whip and said, you have to do this. And he started beating us. And he was beating and beating us and forcing us to do this. And she was thinking, oh, my God, that doesn't sound like my husband. But they were saying, no, no, this is what he did. He forced us. 
And so she took everything and then uh, they left. She's thinking, wow, such nice boys. How can my husband do that? So then he came home and then he saw all these things and said, where did you get that? She said, well, you sent them by these two boys. What two boys? I don't know. And why did you beat them? I didn't beat anybody. And then he went over to his book to see you know, his ver and to read again. And then he saw that the verse he crossed out, Yoga Shem Vahami Aham, was no longer crossed out anymore. So that, that's one story that illustrates. And we, can have, we have very much uh, examples within our Krishna society of devotees simply engaging in devotional service and Krishna provides everything. And that is a fact. <laughs> everywhere I go, I have places to eat. Everywhere I go, I have places to sleep. Everywhere I go, I have transportation. I don't, I don't do any work. <laughs> and it's true for everybody. <laughs> so, um, there's a story of where Sri Thakur and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, which is a classic story. Sri um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to Sri Thakur. She, she says, Sri hey Sri you have a big family, and you don't do anything. You don't work. How do you live? How do you provide for your family? How do you eat? So Sri went. He clapped three times. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, what does, what does that mean? And Sri said, one day, if Krishna doesn't feed me and my family, two days, he clap at me each one day, two days if Krishna doesn't take care of us, three days, if that happens, then I drowned myself in the Ganga. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he heard that, he was like beyond himself with happiness. He roared so loudly and shook the universe. And he said, Srivas, even if Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, has to go from door to door with a begging bowl to beg alms, there will always be everything you need provided in your home. Because Srivas had such faith that he's simply serving the Lord, everything will be provided. Now, I tell that story, and sometimes in some of my presentations, and I tell, if you don't have that faith, it doesn't work. <laughs> but if you have that faith and you engage in devotional service, it works. It's the faith that carries you. And the faith is not something just a principle, it's, an, it's a way of life that Krishna will provide everything you need. So we make a little arrangements to keep body and soul together, that is natural, and we engage in devotional service like that. There's no need for any big, huge arrangements, make a, a little bit, so you have to make a little endeavor in that way, especially if you're a grihasta, if you're a sannyasi or a brahmachari, there's no need to make any endeavor. And everything is already provided because the grihastas want that extra facility of being independent and have the opportunities to have uh, more facilities for sense gratification. They have to engage in some kind of work in order to facilitate that to some degree. But it's explained that that, that degree is Ishabasha Migam Sarvam Yatkin Chaptiram Jagaptena Chaptena Bundi Jaha Magudaha Kashiswadanam. That everything is owned and, and controlled by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And one should take their quota. Quota means what do I need to keep body and soul together so I can engage nicely in devotional service. So if you're rich and you have a lot, doesn't mean you have to change and you know take up a beggy bowl and go live in some holy place. But if you're if you if you're on the begging bowl level, continue on that way. In other words, don't make a big arrangements 
for your material and, and arrangements. Do it in the smallest amount of way, and that way you can engage in devotional service, which is the ultimate goal of life. And if you don't have that faith, then what are you doing in Krishna consciousness? <laughs> the Krishna is providing everything for everyone. You know, the, the rain, when it rains, it goes on the rocks, it goes on the ocean where there's no need for rain, but still it rains. Krishna's mercy is coming. And he, he, he says, I take care of my devotees. There's no need. He's the provider, he's the maintainer, he's the perfect, pr protector, he provides everything. You can see two people are working in the same way. One is getting everything and one is getting nothing. So is it by their efforts? No, it's by the main, the effort is an indication, but the, but the uh, result is Krishna's, uh, Krishna's facilitating that result. Uh, that one verse, what is that verse in the Bhagavad Gita, 247? Can't think of the first, what is, can we bring up that verse? 247, which talks about karma yoga. But it's, karma niya vikadaste mafaleshu kadachana mar karma falahe to abhor mate sangos and karma niya. You have a right to perform your prescribed duties, but you're not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty. So you have your duties as a householder, you have duties as a grihasta, you have the duties as a brahmachari, you have duties, so you have to do your duty. And so for grihasta, there is a little need for making some material arrangements to provide for the griha or for the household. That is considered acceptable, but if it's too much or too little, then it will interfere with our, uh, our progress in devotional service. If you have extra, use it in Krishna consciousness. Srila Rupa Goswami gave the example when he retired from the government service, he had two boatloads of gold that fulfilled. He had so much gold. And then he retired. He divided it in half. He took, he took 50% uh, of what he had and gave it to, to, the, uh, to support temples and preaching projects. The other 50%, he divided in half again, 25% to maintain, and 25% he used for emergencies. In other words, for savings. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada said, this is the formula. You take 50% of your income, divided in these three categories, 25% to live on, 25% for savings, and 50% for Krishna consciousness. Now, who's following that? <laughs> People say, well, you know, I'm making $100,000 a year and I'm gonna give 50,000 to Krishna, forget that. <laughs> so even if you give 10%, that's something. So the idea is if you have extra, use it for Krishna. But don't waste time trying to gain extra. Sometimes people say, well, I have to go make money so I can give it to Krishna. Krishna is not interested in your money. If you have it, use it. And if you don't have it, then just maintain yourself nicely and engage in devotional service. And Krishna does the rest. Two people in similar situations sometimes get two different results. Why? Because one is engaged in devotional service, and the other one is simply engaged in pious activities. Wonderful, Maharaj. If we don't have that faith that Krishna is the supreme controller, the supreme provider, we will not be able to stay fixed on the path of bhakti. That's why it says loss and gain for a devotee is all the same. 
But Krishna takes care of even devotees who are not on the pure platform, uh, like pure devotees, completely taken care of. We are uh, mixed in our devotional service. So, how can we expect to be taken care of like that? Uh, for mixed devotees? Right, because we are not on the pure platform. We are not fully engaged. We are not uh, offering pure devotional service. We are still mixed. No, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Yeyatam mam prapadyante tamsta taiva bhajami aham mama vartvanu vartante manusha partasa As you approach me, I reward you accordingly. Everyone follows my path according uh, in all respects. So as you approach Krishna, Alpha said Krishna is like a mirror. Whatever you hold in front of the mirror, that is how it's reflected. But how you how you approach Krishna, Krishna reciprocates. So yeah, so you can't say everyone is getting the same. Maybe, maybe some people are have the same amounts of material arrangements, but some are more happier than others. Or some are less happier than others. <laughs> how you want to look at it. So how to develop this faith that Krishna is there and Krishna will take care and we don't have to worry so much or be in anxiety. And we may feel, oh, I'm becoming very complacent. I'm taking Krishna for granted. I'm just sitting back and saying, okay, Krishna will do everything. I don't have to do uh, you know, my, have my, to, my duties, have to Krishna will just. We have the story of Maguari the hunter. That's in the Bhagavad That's also in the Bhagavad term. The Lord Narada Muni told the hunter, you know, give up killing animals. And he said, how am I going to live? He said, just sit down here and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. As soon as he started to do that, people were bringing food all over. He had more than he actually needed. You think if you're chanting Hare Krishna, you're not going to, you're going to starve? <laughs> Srila Haridas Thakur was, you know, he was chanting all the time and still, you know, people would provide. They would come and bring something. So just following the orders of the spiritual master and just uh, doing our duties in Krishna consciousness, will help us to gain more and more faith that Krishna is there and Krishna is taking care. Is that yeah. how to go forward? Yeah. Associate with people who are doing that and at the same time chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> but if you're if you're, you. gonna, if you're gonna test Krishna and say, well, you know, I'm a devotee and I'm doing this, so you must provide. <laughs> then Krishna thinks, oh, this person is just, it doesn't really have faith in me at all. <clears throat> and so they're trying to test me. So Krishna won't provide. Krishna knows everything. He's not a fool. <laughs> Don't try to test him. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, I need to understand this principle and understand having faith in Krishna is a process for me because I have so many trust issues. So many trust issues. Well, just present your, your, say, my dear Lord, uh, I'm your servant. So in that verse, I carry what you lack, I preserve what you have. But sometimes Krishna sees what you think you need is what you don't need. What you actually need, you don't even know that. <laughs> So you're making your presentation, you're making your proclamation of declaration, and you're presenting it to Krishna to hear, hear you've got to fulfill this. And if you do, then I can believe you fulfill all desires. You know. So it's your program. <laughs> and sometimes Krishna will say, all right, here, 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 take it. And if you're not happy, don't blame me. <laughs> Right, right. Go by, you have to go by his program, not your Not program. to. 
Right. That's the thing, Guru Maharaj. I want to turn off my own you know, rumblings and, you know, my own twistings are going on and on in my head. And I want to get in tune with what Krishna wants because that's the best for me. But I, pray, I can't wrap my like head that, around that concept, you know. If you pray like that, it will happen. Sincerely pray. Okay. You, Thank you, you so much. You, because yes, you don't have you, because you don't have that faith, or you had, don't have full faith, you can't pray like that. <laughs> hmm. Because the faith is not there, the prayer is hmm. is either fifty percent, whatever. But then reflect. Yes. Uh, reflect on whatever you have and see that it's all due to the mercy of the Lord. Yes, absolutely. I can see how Krishna has taken care much more than I can ever imagine. And yet, and yet I have difficulty trusting him. <laughs> Just continue to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Maharaj. Jai, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance as a go to Srila Prabhupada. Prabhu Maharaj, amazing point. Uh, I cannot agree more that Krishna takes care of it. Uh, just kind of coming to Brahmacharya Ashram, just taking this responsibility for Harinams. Never before devotees were inspired. Uh, just trying to 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 follow your instructions. Uh, devotees are just see inspiration in what you're doing. They're giving Lakshmi. Lakshmi is coming. I am doing nothing, and we have more than enough. Uh, it's, it's just incredible how it happens. It's like as you said, like the more we are just giving ourselves to devotional service for Krishna satisfaction, just like things start to pop up from different levels, and yeah, it's like. Yeah, thank you for that. And I have a question, Maharaj. For um, you said that the, if too much suffering, people will not be able to practice Krishna consciousness. And I kind of see that in the long run, in the next few years, probably the world will come to that point where people lots of much more suffering than we can see already. So uh, any comments? Uh, like, so that's why these farm communities are important. So we can give the shelter. So you said like about food. You can give them like you know the necessary food activities and then we can preach to them or any other comments Srila's Prabhupada's uh, projection and instructions on how one can live in the material world and at the same time execute Krishna consciousness with the least amount of effort it's it's a lifestyle that's conducive to the execution of Krishna consciousness, which means simple living, high thinking. Simple living means, you know, nature's providing everything. Well, the material societies, they take everything from nature, they rearrange it, then they sell it back in the form of trying to make profit from it. We just want to use what material nature provides in order to live nicely. That's all. And not waste time with all these other uh, experiments. I was just talking this morning to one devotee. We were talking. He's, uh, he's engaged with, you know, pharmacy, medical. And I was saying, well, wh where does medicine come from? Comes from comes from nature. <laughs> The herbs, the plants, the trees, all of these things, and even the pharmacists, the medical people, the scientists, they go into nature and they uh, extract these various types of, and then they mix it with other things and they, they call it our medicine. <laughs> it's coming from God. <laughs> so, yeah. This is a whole subject from simple living, Krishna conscious thinking. Uh, and there's a lot to be, to be said about this. And I've talked about this so many times. And uh, I'm pushing this as a, as a way for devotees to understand how to 
you know, maximize their time and live a life which is more natural, especially for those who are in the gray house to ash. Uh, so make, uh, yeah, so we're not saying change your situation, but make plans to, uh, to that as, you know, as time goes on, it will be harder and harder to, uh, it's already happening. The luxuries that were so were there years, two years ago are no longer there. Uh, luxuries are first to be taken away, and then soon the necessities will gradually be dwindled down, and people will be struggling more and more. It's happening already. And government, yeah, Durvasya, uh, what is it? Durviksha. Durviksha means more and more taxations by governments. More and more, uh, less rainfall, uh, less uh, availabilities of foodstuffs. Uh, all of this is part of the increase of the effects of Kali Yuga. It's already happening like that. Taxed to death and at the same time not able to maintain one's existence. But simple living, Krishna consciousness, a range of communities based on agriculture, and uh, gradually, you know, everything is provided for. It takes time for the transition, but it's already being done by thousands and thousands of devotees and hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Other groups are doing it more, much more than the devotees are doing it, except they're missing the main point. They don't have Krishna. They're doing it from the point of view of a lifestyle. That's all. Sixty mm -hmm. percent of the food products are go to waste. Yeah, that's... okay. So, do we need another rise in the pandemic to to wake people up? Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> like... electrical But these are messages from from material nature. They're messages from Krishna. Get it together. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have one question. Um, definitely, like besides Krishna, I don't think we have any other shelter now. Of course, Guru and uh, Krishna. But sometimes when we read uh, like Gajendra pastime and in his previous life, he was very much devoted to Krishna, Vishnu and he was a king but just a small mistake he made that he could not give proper respect to I think it was Agastya Muni and he was given this curse that he has to take birth uh, as an elephant um, and same for King Naga I was reading that that he has to take birth as a fish because he gave cow in a wrong way to Brahmans. So I feel like I've made so many such like big, big mistakes than these small, small things. Even they ask for forgiveness and they knew and realized that they have made the mistakes. But I might have done so many unknowingly also so many mistakes. So where is our destination, Guru Maharaj? Sorry. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is merciful. Whatever is done is done, but just now engage in devotional service. That's all. <laughs> Let the past that sleeps near the future dream it all. Act in times that are with thee in progress, ye shall call. Live in the present, plan for the future, but live in the present. That means now is the time for devotional service. Whatever mistakes you learn, you had, you learn from the past. You can't, you can't undo those things. They happen. That's the way life is. People lament about what happened, and they're always in anxiety about what's, what's not, what's not happening. <laughs> you know, like yesterday, I'm traveling in the airport. And it's, the whole the whole communication systems in the airports just collapsed, <laughs> and every, all everything just stopped in the airports, and hundreds hundreds of people are standing around. You know, planes can't move. Uh, 
people are their baggage can't they can't get their baggage this went on for hours and you know and some people were helpless <laughs> so that's just the way material energy is can't do anything about it all you can do is become krishna conscious and then you can rise above all these things don't worry about the past learn from it we learn from the past and we we apply the knowledge that we need in the present and the future will be you know uh, a future that is progressive we will overcome the mistakes we made in the past if we don't learn from the past then we'll commit the same mistakes again or if we don't learn from others who are teaching us what to do and what not to do. That's, that's Shastra, that's Guru. So it's important we understand scripture, we understand Guru. So we can avoid these mistakes. Thanks Guru Maharaj, thank you very much. Very helpful. Hare Krishna. Hare. We have a we have a question from Shreyas, who's age ten. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my obeisances. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I am in my bhakti life for six months, and Maharaj, I am doing my chantings for one month, but for a few weeks. My chanting rounds are getting low. I used to do two rounds chanting, but nowadays it is getting more lower. And nowadays I do not do chanting at all. And for this, my life is getting worse and worse. Maharaji, can you give me a way so that I can come out from this problem? Means when I come to Japa or do the Japa, my mind goes here and there. Well, the answer is Sadhu Sangha, association with devotees. So go to the programs and chant with the devotees. Go to the temples, associate with the devotees. Um, talk to the devotees, call up the devotees, invite the devotees to your house. Uh, devotee association will help you again bring back your enthusiasm for chanting and your. Uh, <clears throat> ability to uh, improve also. So the Rony Association is what you need more and more. So. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Don't be afraid. Devotees are always happy to help. Don't try, don't try to solve your own problems. <laughs> you can get all the problems to solve in the association of devotees if you seriously take that association. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhu. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for the wonderful class. Thank you so much for teaching us uh, to be depend on Krishna in all the circumstances. Thank you so much. Very, very wonderful class. Very grateful to you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Shabbat Hare Krishna.